for what grace has brought about in your life and my life. Celebrate his faithfulness. Celebrate his faithfulness. There is none like him. We we'll give you glory, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Amen. To take God for granted is to be granted. When we despise his acts, he withdraws his hands. We have celebrated him for who he is and his faithfulness. His manifest presence in our midst over the years. We have taken stock. We can't read others because his wonders are without number. <laughs> And that's why we say, and many, many more. Many, many more. He doeth great things, past finding out, yea, and wonders without number. That's our story. Wonders without number. That's our story. And have we given him this fearful praise out of a heart of gratitude? We are set for his fearful blessings. Amen. The next one year will be full of fearful blessings. Amen. Strange liftings. Amen. Strange works and strange acts of God. Amen. In individuals' lives Amen. and in our lives as a commission. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you, thank you Lord. for accepting our thanksgiving this morning. And now speak to each one of us. Yes, Let your word open a new chapter to our lives. Amen. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. It's my year of breaking limits. That is also my portion of Christ. Give the Lord a big hand and get seated, please. Every time God is set to do his work, he expects his people to be prepared for it. Amen. Amen. When God is coming down with his strange words and strange art, he requires preparation for his arrival. We are in the last days. That began in the upper room, as Peter said it. This is that which was spoken by Prophet Joel that in the last days upon my spirit upon all flesh. So the last days began there. So we are actually moving towards the tail end of the last days. The time we don't know. But we are sure that we are in the midst of the last days. Hallelujah. The last days are the golden age of the church. The golden age of the church. It shall come to pass in life that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your men shall, your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. All kinds. No then to the last days. He said in Micah chapter 4. But in the last days shall come to pass that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountains. They shall be exalted above the hills and people shall flow into it. And many nations shall come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and to the house of the God of Jacob. And he will teach us his ways and we will walk in his paths. For the Lord shall proceed or go forth out of Zion 
And the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, that means authority will be restored, will be domiciled in Zion. The law, the law, that means authority shall be established in Zion. Men that matter the most in every field of human endeavor shall be located in the church. Shall be found in the church. Then shall the saying come to pass. This and that man was born in her. Psalm 87 verse 5. And of Zion shall be said, this and that man was born in her. Zion is the church of God in prophecy. Hebrews 12, 22-24. And the highest himself shall establish her. The Lord shall count when he writes of the people that this man was born there. As well as the singers and the players of instruments shall be there. All my springs shall be found in Zion. All the springs of life shall be located in Zion. The giants of giants that generations have never recorded will begin to emerge from Zion. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. But and here, when it's a child, different nothing from a servant. Though he be Lord of all. But it's under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the Father. You don't vest authority in children, you vest authority in sons. Unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government shall rest upon the shoulder of the son, not the child. Not the child. So for us to be part of that glorious agenda of the end time, we must build spiritual capacity. We must build spiritual capacity. One of the platforms ordained of God to build spiritual capacity is to be committed to fellowship. We must understand the blessing of being committed to fellowship. We must understand it. For that is the platform for building spiritual capacity. We understand that God, God tempts no man with evil. James 1, 13 to 15. So whatever will destroy us, it will not bring us into it. So without building appropriate capacity, we can't be part of this rise of giants. We have to. All the springs of life is ordained to emerge from Zion. All the springs of life. Giants in science. Giants in technology. Giants in research. Giants in inventions. Giants in industry. I mean, all my springs are in thee, O Zion. You see that song, that psalm in Psalm 87, verse 1. He said, The Lord, his foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loved the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of the old city of God. That's the church of the end time. Glory to God. We must be committed to fellowship if we must build spiritual capacity to match God's agenda for our life as individuals. No believer can survive in the faith without fellowship. Why? Fellowship provides a covering against sin and Satan. It's a city of refuge. Hebrews 3.13 is 
speaking to yourself daily why it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceiveness of sin. No one, no matter how anointed, can survive in the faith without being committed to fellowship. Even Jesus established a fellowship platform to deliver his messianic man. Psalm 65 and verse 4. Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance and holiness, and God who shall possess their possessions. Obadiah chapter 1, verse 17. Be committed to fellowship so you can keep building spiritual capacity to match God's glorious agenda for your life in these end times. Don't you ever toy with it. To be away from fellowship is to go from weakness to weakness until you are gone. Until one is gone. Let's take responsibility. No one here will miss his place. Amen. No one here will miss his place. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. We're looking briefly this morning at this very important subject. Thanksgiving, gateway to our next level of blessings. Thanksgiving, gateway to our next level of blessings. First, we are redeemed for next levels of experience in life. The path of the justified is as the shining light that shines more and more and more Unto the perfect day. Remember not the former things. Isaiah 43 verse 18 and 19. Neither consider the things of old. Why? Behold I will do a new thing. Neither shall spring forth shall ye not know. No, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So God has. A next level Inheritance for the justified. For the redeemed of the Lord. But we understand from scriptures that until we thank God for the last, we cannot commit him to the next. That means thanksgiving is a spiritual force that triggers access to next levels. Until we thank him for the last, we cannot commit him to the next. That is the story of the one leper that returned. The other nine wanted to wait for wholeness. You don't change level by waiting. You change level by thanking him for where he has brought you. Then he will take you to the next level. Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 17. And verse 17 to 19. Let's start from 15. And when one of them, when he saw that he was healed, he turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. He, I mean, and fell down at his feet, giving him thanks. And it was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, We are one. Were not there ten cleansed, but we are uh, the nine. There are not found that return to give thanks to God. Save this stranger. And he said, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. So he changed level from being healed to being made whole through the mystery of thanksgiving. You don't thank God for where you are. You are not a candidate for the next level. You are not a candidate for the next level. And we are in the prophetic era of next levels in the body of Christ. God changing his people's levels supernaturally. And so we have to be armed with the weapon of thanksgiving to be part of this change of level End time army. 
Kanagi ayo yeme. You saw us dancing. You are part of the dancing yesterday, today. We have been dancing like that without any musical instruments. We've been jumping like men and women who have lost their mind. When the church was six, we were dancing. Ten, jumping. Twenty, acrobatic displays. Just celebrating God away. And he kept changing us from one level to another. It's a covenant keeping God. Nobody's level will ever change without being genuinely grateful for where he is. Glory to God. I once lived as my room, a grass touched roof, land that in that village. Anytime it's raining, it depends on the wind direction, you keep changing your bed. <laughs> Amen. I was enjoying myself. Serving Jesus with all my heart. I also once lived in a room, apartment. I won't tell you how many people wake up from that room. People, just, people are not with you, not because your room is not large, your heart is not large. Life. Thank God for where you are, you're on the way to the next level. Amen. If you thank God for one room today, it will soon become two tomorrow. Yes, you thank God for two, it will soon become a flat. And then you're on your way going. And someday you can build an estate as it begins to change your level. Number two, we do not only thank God, we understand from, the, from Scripture that we do not only thank God for what has happened, but we thank God to make things happen. We thank God to make things happen. In everything, give thanks. For well, that is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. 1 Corinthians 5.18 I mean, 1 Thessalonians, sorry, 5.18. The word says, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 36, for ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. So we do thanksgiving to assess the promise. Thanksgiving will always trigger the delivery of the promise. That's the way it works. You'll never be stranded again. <laughs> if you have lost anything, it's the reason why you have not lost everything. It's the reason why you have not lost everything. So give him thanks. Your greatest asset is your breath. Your most valuable asset is your breath. That's why when sickness strikes, everything one has loses value. They say you will need so, so much for this. Say, Look, t- sell my cars. They say it's not enough. Sell my house. Why? You are battling for your breath. Psalm 150, verse 6. Let everything that has breath do what? Praise, praise the Lord. He said, praise ye the Lord. So in everything, as long as your breath is still in, pray, in place, give thanks for the sustain of your breath. I slept and I woke because the Lord sustains me. So thank God for the sustainer of your breath. Then it will sustain your body. It will sustain your business. You are not just waking up and uh, you know, sleeping and waking up in the morning. By, ch- by chance, somebody's on duty to so keep you alive and awake. He neither sleeps nor slumber because of you and me. He that watches, he that keepeth Israel shall neither sleep nor slumber. 
The Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade upon my right hand. So you are not a biological accident. Your father in heaven is watching over you. And so we owe him thanks. That this ministry is still alive and where today we owe God thanks. We owe him thanks. Most of the time we only look at the things we don't have. We don't look at the things that we have. Now, what do you have without your breath? Nothing. What do you have without your breath? Nothing. Nothing. So your most valuable asset has been sustained Amen. by God. Yes. You don't give him thanks, may he not withdraw it. Mm. If he doesn't watch over you and me per day, God forbid. Mm. Number three, thanksgiving is gateway to our next level of breakthroughs. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail, and the fish shall lack, shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. And the Lord shall become my strength. It will make my wobbling feet like hinds feet. And will make me to walk upon my high places. Our next level of breakthroughs is triggered by genuine gratitude to God for where we are. Yes, the work is not showing any sign of anything, but thank you for sustaining my breath because I know it shall be well. Amen. Can I hear your amen? amen? That's why I said in Psalm 28 and verse 5, because they regard not the works of the Lord, neither the operation of his hand, he shall destroy them and shall not build them up. He's watching over you night and day, is that so what? <laughs> because they regard not the works of the Lord. The Lord. He neither sleeps nor slumber. Neither the operation of his hand. He said he shall destroy them. He shall not build them up. Say with me, God forbid. God forbid. Our next level of breakthrough requires an attitude of gratitude. It requires what? An attitude of gratitude. Number four, thanksgiving is gateway to our next level of victory. Our next level of victory. You are confronted with battles that you have no capacity to confront. And yet you deserve victory. He said now, set singers. Start to sing my praise. They began to sing. And God stepped in. For his mercies endured it forever. And God stepped in. He set ambushment against the enemies and they were all smitten and no one of them escaped. Because they knew, he said, we have no power or might against this great company that come against us. Neither know we what to do. He said, do you want to experience the next level of victory? Come on now. Get into celebrating my faithfulness. Get into singing of my message. And watch how take over your battle. So what Thanksgiving does is to move God, take over our battles. Well, in the name of Jesus... For every one of us, under the sound of my voice today, you will not need to struggle to see victory anymore. Yeah. Through an intense attitude of gratitude, celebration and praise, 
God will continue to take over your battles. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number five, thanksgiving is also a gateway to next level of anointing. Please listen to this. It will bless your soul. It's a good thing, Psalm 92, verse 1 and 2, to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High. To show forth thy love and kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. And verse 10, my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of a unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. So we are says anointing of fresh oil through the mystery of thanksgiving. I have found David my servant always dancing to my presence and with my holy oil have I anointed. Psalm 89 verse 20. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exert upon him anymore. No, the sons of wickedness afflict him. I will beat down his foes before him and plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him and in my name shall his own be exalted. That's the mystery of genuine gratitude. It's not doing that with the tongue, but doing it from the heart. These people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do they honor me, but they have removed their heart far from me. Their heart is not in it. Glory to God. Yeah. Access to the next level anointing requires a life of thanksgiving. A life of genuine thanksgiving. How God anointed. So we need to gain access in there to be anointed of God. And let us enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Let's be thankful to him and bless his holy name. Every time you walk into an old man's place, in my place, he showers a blessing. Amen. Amen. Every time you assess God's presence, he releases fresh oil. And it takes thanksgiving twice. Let us be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Let's enter into his cause with thanksgiving. Psalm 100 verse 4. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his cause with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his holy name. Then he will pour fresh oil on your life. Your head shall no more lack ointment. Amen. He said, let not thy head lack ointment. Let thy garments be always white. And let thy head lack no ointment. Access to the realm is a life of thanksgiving and praise. Welcome there. Amen. Welcome there. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Number six. We also understand from scripture that thanksgiving is gateway to next level of supernatural church growth. Gateway to next level of church growth. In Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 19, out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry and I will multiply them and they shall not be few. I will also glorify them and they shall not be small. Hallelujah. You don't thank God for two in church. You never see four. You don't thank God for four. You never smell 40. You don't thank God for 40. You never see 100. You don't thank God genuinely for 100. You are not accounting for 1,000. Let all men, all church leaders, all pastors hear this. No matter how hard you pray until you give thanks, you don't see next level growth. You, don't, you are not a candidate for next level of church growth. You are not. Because until you thank God for the last, 
you are never qualified for the nest. You can't commit him to the nest. You cannot commit him to the nest. Amen. In the same vein, in our individual life, if you are not thankful, you are not a candidate for next level. If you are not genuinely thankful, you are not a candidate for next level. If you are not genuinely thankful, glory to God. Someone once said to me, Brother David, I learned to got a car. I said, yes, God gave me a very fantastic car. He said, did I get Volkswagen Beetle? I said, yes. And he did his hand like this. You know, God doesn't know joke. Every idle word a man shall speak is chargeable for him. Chargeable to him. If riding a Beetle is riding a car, no. Not ride one. Amen. Everything God does should be fantastic to you. Everything, everything, everything. <laughs> Somebody's changing level. Next level church growth is triggered by genuine thanksgiving for where we are. And then the next level shows up. And you thank God for the that next level and the next level shows up. That's the way it works. Finally, number seven. Thanksgiving is gateway to our next level of command of the supernatural. You thank God for healing someone of headache. Very shortly, somebody will be healed of migraine. Very shortly, somebody will be healed of chest pain. Very shortly, somebody will be healed of cancer. And shortly, somebody is rescued from coronavirus. Shortly, the death begins to rise. By giving thanks to God for the manifestation of the supernatural in your life, it keeps changing level. It keeps changing level. It keeps changing level. I therefore decree that you return from this Thanksgiving service with a tireless heart of gratitude Amen. to God Amen. all the days of your life. Amen. Jesus had raised Jairus' daughter. He has raised somebody, he says. And then, so they say, time has come when the dead in the grave shall hear them. We hear. And so, there was no laying hands on Lazarus. Amen. Amen. Lazarus come forth. And that was dead came forth. How? He gave thanks. Father, I thank you because you have heard me. Although he's thinking now, but you have heard me because he must hear me. Lazarus come forth. And the next level of command of supernatural came through. So it takes being thankful to experience next level of command of the supernatural in our lives. It takes being thankful, giving him all the glory. Recognize that he's the one doing it. Yes, now, I know, for instance, that nobody has power to raise the dead. Only Jesus. He has the key. Not a key. The key. The key. He doesn't want to tempt anybody with it. By the time you have the gift of raising the dead, you can start selling it. The economy is very bad. <laughs> Praise God. So he alone is in custody of that key. Yes, sir. I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive and live forevermore, and have the keys of hell and of death. Yes, it could flow through any channel, but it's the one. Is the resurrection. And the life. Praise God. It doesn't share that with anybody else. It's the resurrection and the life. That is not shared with anybody else. So every time the dead is raised, Jesus only put out the key. Jesus just put out the key. And he raises whomsoever he wills. He raises whomsoever he wills. 
So he does. He said, the son quickened whom he will. Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Let this man come back to life. Say, okay. What is he coming to do? To do? <laughs> so that man said, I don't have any more thing to do. I have enough to eat till I die. He said, okay, tonight. That's what he said. This man, does he have anything yes he wants to do? I'm not there, but that's what I think. Praise God. Amen. May you keep having what to do. Amen. In advancing the kingdom of God. Amen. No death can tamper with your life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What are we saying here? A life that is worth of thanksgiving is a miserable life. It's a stranded life. It's a life that has no future. Please be thankful. Be thankful. It's your assets and my assets to next levels in all areas of life. Nothing changes level without thanksgiving. In the same way, no one changes level without being thankful. Without being thankful. I can tell you how real that is. The first time my wife came to our church in Kaduna, we were about 21 people in the service that day. That was a lot of number because that was two on top of last Sunday. Praise God. Now, she couldn't marry the joy with her. She was returning back home from that mission. Driving 660 kilometers every week. To be in Kaduna. But when one person is added to church, you see me beaming with joy and laughter and the word of God coming forth. She didn't have the time to ask me how many were in church. No. It's not about many. It's that two people got saved. Three got saved. Amen. The word went forth. The joy and rejoicing of that time is the result we are saying today. Hallelujah. You better never be sorry for yourself because the joy of the Lord is behind your change of level. If you don't rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, you stay at the same spot for too long. It's your turn for a change of story. It's your turn for a change of story. So this jumping and leaping and dancing is not a display of emotion. It's a manifestation of heart-seated gratitude. Amen. Amen. What have we done to merit all this? It's all of grace. And we will not receive that grace in vain, but we give it what it takes to sustain it. The good news today is this. Between now... And May 2nd next year, you shall be a wonder to behold. Amen. Everyone under the sound of my voice today shall be a wonder to behold. Amen. Many, many giants of strange order will begin to emerge from this platform. Amen. Men and women that subdue kingdoms shall begin to rise from here. Amen. Young and old that will never bow to the devil. But we maintain the righteousness of God in them shall begin to rise from here. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. How many are truly grateful for the hand of God on their lives? Lift up your right hand and give him thanks. Give him thanks. Would you thank him for the gift of life? Would you thank him for sustaining your breath? In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Give the Lord a big hand of praise wherever you are. Very quickly, right now, there are people here that need to open the doors of their heart to Jesus. 
You are one of them. I'd like to pray with you in one moment. Remember, the living, the living, he shall praise thee as I do this day. The father to the children shall make known thy truth. Isaiah 38 verse 19. Whosoever has the son of God has life. 1 John 5 12. Whosoever has not the son of God has not life. So it is receiving Christ to your heart that gives you life. Eternal life that qualifies you to give thanks and praise unto God. And experience the change of level that has reserved for all of the justified, all of the redeemed of the Lord. Wherever you are, you would like me to pray with you, please lift to your right hand. And I will be doing that prayer right now. You pray this prayer after me. That includes those who want to rededicate their lives to Christ. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand. And pray this prayer after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, surrender I surrender my heart to you today. Forgive me, Forgive me. All, my heart, all, all my sins. All my sins. Wash, me Wash me with your blood. I believe you died for me. Died for me. On the third day you rose again. Rose that I may be justified. Right now, right now. I, believe I believe my sins are now forgiven. Are now I'm justified by your blood. I'm, by your blood. I'm, saved. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm, born again. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm, back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Child Thank, of God. You, Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Saving my soul. Amen. Amen. Now, be blessed of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Amen. May the grace that brought you into the kingdom today preserve you for life. Amen. I cover every one of you with the blood of Jesus. Of Jesus. Stay covered to the end of time. Amen. You shall not fail. Amen. You shall not falter. Amen. You will make this journey to the end. Amen. And grace to live the commerce life, I decree it upon your life right now. Amen. Sin shall no more have dominion over Amen. you. Amen. You will make heaven at the end. Amen. 